Hey everybody, before we start today's episode, I would like to remind you that I have a gaming review YouTube channel called Kanoa Reviews, where I review games both old and new, and where you can also request certain reviews to be done. You can find a link to that channel in the description down below, and please subscribe if you like what you see. I also started a new channel labeled Kitsune Gaming, which was requested I also started a new channel labeled Kitsune Gaming, which was a requested channel where I let's play games made in Asia including JRPGs and the such. It is still in a very early stage as there has only been one video uploaded and it doesn't even have a profile picture yet, but please subscribe if you are into those type of games and feel free to let me know what Japanese game or RPG you would like to see me play on that channel. You can find a link to that channel in the description down as well. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the episode. The Orcs were an ever so increasingly imposing presence on Earth. After some victories and some defeats against the Imperium of Man, their sworn enemy that they have been fighting for the longest of times, they finally had several breakthroughs as they easily butchered the UNSC forces and were able to reinforce and bring over more advanced weaponry to the front. Logistics would be done via their trucks, which could be seen as heaps of scrap metal to the unobserving eye. They were mostly for transport, but they'd have some weapons on them, but none that could deal with any opposing armored vehicles. They did haul in some more advanced aircraft, which they could use for scouting purposes or air support to the ground troops. But this was not necessarily the preferred style of the Orc, as they always came back to good old brawling on your own two feet. Once they had settled small bases, they started to spread out with the help of their trucks by loading them up with Orcs who would be sent out to do the fighting and raiding of nearby towns and cities. And the Orcs even still had some secrets up their sleeves that they were not willing to show the UNSC just yet. Both factions were still testing each other's strength, though the Orcs knew no fear and would plummet themselves into battle even if the odds were completely stacked against them. Their next big assault was a small desert town not too far from the coast. The flat terrain made the horde of green warriors easy to spot for the UNSC and they had immediately responded. Since the orcs were heading in with their weaponized trucks, they responded by sending in their warthogs. They had a mixture of rockets and machine gun turrets and were about to test the strength of their newest enemy in terms of wheeled combat. Hey everybody and a welcome to another episode. Today hopefully we're getting revenge for the UNSC after the initial defeat by the orcs. As we're going to test their strength when it comes to weaponized uh, or wheeled weaponized combat. Bit of a Mad Max type of scenario, I guess. We heard that they are sending a lot of weaponized trucks this way. And we are responding with a lot of uh, warthogs of our own. We have a mixture between machine gunners and rockets. Now the rockets are preferred because if we only cripple their vehicle, their crew will disembark and they'll make um, more difficult targets, especially with the warthogs being so open. The warthogs are quite powerful, but their one major flaw is how um, not well protected you are from enemy fire. Now, of course, I also realized that the Warthogs are probably mostly used for support and not the main attack force. But it is cool to see. Okay, here we are. So I am a machine gunner, my unit, so let's get in there. And there they already went. Ooh, and we got lucky there, killing the crew. That one disembarked. That one's still alive. Disembarking again. Kill the crew. Ooh, and there I went. You can see I only fired... Like I fired less than 200 rounds their way. Let's uh, switch to a rocket gunner. It might be, get a little bit laggy uh, in the chaos here. But bear with me for a moment. It will get better. Ooh. Oh, I literally was about to shoot. Ah, oh, beautiful. What a shot. Another one. Good, good, good. Gotta reload, gotta reload. And then you open here. Oh, I already died. I, I was clicking the fire button. He wouldn't fire. I already died. Let's be another rocket gunner. Ooh, I nearly took a hit. My driver might be dead. Are you sure? Nope, he's still alive. Let's see where we're getting. Oh, there. There's a whole bunch. Yeah, nice shot. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, I'm there. I already went. See the smoke rising. Pretty sure we're getting hit from the left. Oh, we definitely are. Oh, look at that. Oh, that blue br uh, part of the bridge, too. Oh, and I already died. Look at that. Look how quickly it can go. Let's actually switch to a driver then. So now the difficult thing here is becoming to look for remnants of the crew that disembarked. That is still a truck that has its crew in it. I just prefer shooting all the trucks that are still out there because though some of them might have their crew disembarked. Yeah, come on, shoot them. Good, good, good. Okay, they're crippled. But yeah, now all the fire that you can see is coming from individual crew members. Oh, they shot my uh, my turret gunner. That's bad. That's actually a good... I might die if I disembark, but hold on. Let's see if I can get in a turret gunner and do some damage here. Ooh, yeah, baby. Trying to fire. Am I dead? Yep, I'm dead. Those probably weren't, uh... Ah, the gunner's already dead. That's not good. That is not good. I will give the victory to, uh, to the UNSC. Oh, Jesus, I'm already dead. To the UNSC, even if they, uh, if I run out of units. Mostly that is because, again, with the crew disembarking, it's such a, so difficult. Ooh, we got a, another fight here at the rear. Ooh, look at that. Take him out. Good thing there is that he lost his turret gunner. The driver's still in it. The gunner is still there in the left truck. Actually getting out. Let's see if we can do some. Uh, need to heal. Again, the orcs do not have any rockets on their trucks, meaning that, um, in that sense, they are less powerful. It would definitely make for a more interesting wheel fight to have rocket cars against rocket cars. Okay, there we go. They're taking out. Ooh, nope. All right, let's head in there. My gunner's still no. My gunner's dead. Great. Uh, I don't. Well, damn it. Oh, I immediately died, and they actually blew us up. Kind of interesting. All right, let's see. Looks like the rear forces are all we can choose now. Let's actually go around that unit that shot us. So yeah, I do think I'm going to give this victory to the UNSC, but it's not a super easy victory. But mostly, again, mostly it's the... Uh, like, the war trucks are more powerful, but they're so much less defended or armored when it comes to that. Like, a few hits here, and I'm already... Like, my fuel is already damaged. And I'm dead, even. Look at that. Look how quickly they take us out. Like, they... The orcs are actually more of a threat to the... Um, the warthogs if they're on foot... Than if they're in their vehicles. Like, their vehicles actually um, break down really quickly. You can see that only a few shots from the machine gun takes them out. Ooh, God, and there I already went. Looks like also the one rifleman in there died as well. Ooh. And immediately lost my driver and myself. All right, we still got some rear guard there, but I guess I didn't have them uh, playable. So, uh, I don't know, maybe I should give it to the, uh, the UNSC. Or you know what? I, I won't, like, call Victor here. The UNSC was able to fend off the incoming, um, like, orc attack, but they, uh, they suffered from it, so basically they're, um, they suffered the same amount of losses as the, uh, the orcs did. The battle was devastating for both forces. The weaponized orc vehicles were indeed expected to not pose too much of a threat in terms of firepower, but their crew could deal serious damage to any of the Warthog crew as they were open to be fired upon. It proved that though the UNSC had superior vehicles in terms of firepower, they could not deal with an orc convoy head-on this way. 
the city held that day, but it came at a great cost. They did realize, though, that in order to avoid such a conflict, turrets with shields would need to be set up in order to protect the nearby areas from being overrun by the orcs. Quite a few of the orcs actually did manage to get very close to the city border, but in the end were stopped by the warthogs that held at the rear. They were easy targets for the gunners, but in the end, so were they. At the same time, the Galactic Empire also did not sit still. It unleashed new assaults around the Pacific in the hopes to attack and spread out underneath the cover of the jungle. Their presence was well known, but by using these tactics, they could strike quickly and unexpectedly against the UNSC. For their next assault, a large force of shore troopers would attack a nearby town that was currently held by the troops from Earth. But this time, they would not go in alone and instead be accompanied by a special unit of death troopers. These black armor troopers were highly skilled and possessed some very powerful weaponry, but the real question was if it would be enough to overthrow the UNSC force that currently held their ground.